Thank you very much. And let me immediately tell you that uh, uh, in my talk, I would really would like to consider Sangordon time models, more precisely the FRG study of Sangordon time models, which seems to be a little orthogonal to the issue or topic of the uh, today afternoon. I'm considering Higgs physics or whatever. But I hope that I'm able to convince you that this is not the case. So that's why I put these two words, conformal field theory and Higgs physics. Because what I would like to say, what I would like to present you, some application of sine Gordon type models, models towards these directions. And let's see what we can see. So, why sine Gordon models? First of all, the definition, a very brief definition of a sine Gordon model. It contains a periodic self interaction. Phi is a real single component uh, scalar field, so the simplest case whatever one can imagine. The model contains two parameters, the Fourier amplitude and beta. And I put three issues here. And these three issues is a kind of uh, commercial stuff. I would like to, in the beginning of the talk, show you that, that, that the topic, so the sine Gordon stuff, can somehow relate it to the, some, some possible talks of today. For example, let me just jump to the second one, Higgs physics. We have talks on Higgs physics in the afternoon. What do I mean relation of sine Gordon models to Higgs physics? I will tell you. BKT, this is the first one. I put it in because I consider it as probably the most important one. This is the playground for sine Gordon model. BKT means berezinski costelli stales phase transition, so a topological phase transition. And indeed, sine Gordon type models can be used to attack uh, BKT type phase transition. And Pavel uh, Jakubczyk will present, at least for me, a very exciting talk, I hope so, on the amplitude fluctuation, O2 model, XY model, whatever. And this sine Gordon representation rep brings us a tool to attack the problem in a different way. And there is this first issue, which is conformal field theory, and more precisely, Zamolochik of C function and C theorem. This is basically the, the main ingredients of my talk. So I put it in a kind of reverse order. So the most I would like to speak about C function stuff. A little, a little introduction what I mean, Sy Gordon physics towards Higgs potential. And just mention a few words about BKT. Of course, limited time. I cannot really uh, put all the words what I had in my mind. So, if I wish to do this scenario, go through this scenario, then certainly I need a method. And the method is, not surprisingly, FRG. Very, very briefly, in a nutshell. So we know that the Wetterich equation has a form, which is the simplest in that case, because we're considering a simple single component scalar field theory. You know the story uh, R is the regulator function. We also know that the regulator function should fulfill some requirements, otherwise free to choose. So this brings us some difficulties. If we consider the exact uh, FRG equation and solve it, then the regulator dependence is not an issue. But we, we have to make truncations. So we know that the truncated flow depends on the regulator. And we really need approximation, so I picked up two generally used approximations. The first line is the so-called gradient or uh, derivative expansion, where the gamma, the running gamma, is expanded in terms of uh, the derivative of the fields. That's what I use uh, very frequently. And the leading order term, z, the, the wave function normalization set to be zero. That's the leading order, which is called local potential approximation. So we will have results in LPA and also LPA prime. I will tell you the details. Further uh, approximations. One can use, for example, a Taylor expansion of the potential order wave function normalization. And if we cut it, then it's certainly an approximation. So our results, and my results, what I present today, will depend on n cut, will depend on how far I go to the derivative expansion. Okay, that's the general warning for you. Now comes the sign Gordon stuff. This is the main issue. So let me first really uh, uh, go through how, dif how different uh, extension of the sign Gordon model can possibly be written. So, 
This is, as I told you, a single component scalar field theory. Now I defined D equal to uh, dimension, I mean Euclidean dimension. And indeed, the model has two parameters, u and beta. And the model has two symmetries, Z2 and periodicity. Remind you that periodicity is a discrete symmetry. So even in D equal to, the model could have a non-trivial phase structure. And indeed, it has. It undergoes the so-called topological or BTK phase transition, which is characterized with this critical value of the frequency, beta squared equal to 8 pi. There are some kind of issues where the sine gordon model has been used, mostly in statistical physics. I don't want to iterate it. The next step, the next idea to generalize this sine gordon is just to add uh, explicit mass. You may ask for what? These are the reasons. This model has been used again in superfluidity, superconductivity, etc. But the idea, what I would like to show you, that probably this massive sine gordon model can play some role in Higgs physics. I will tell you what I mean. But it is clear, if I add a mass term here, then it immediately breaks periodicity. So periodicity is gone, and what remains is a Z2 symmetry, so one expects a kind of easing-like phase transition. That's one thing. Another thing, one can play with coupling of many sine gordons, then we have a coupled system, we can also use it for superconductors, I mean to describe vortex behavior, but at this point I don't want to uh, tell you more about this kind of extension. Instead, I would like to play with the frequency beta. Now, that's the main issue of today. Let me again record the usual sine gordon and do the following trick. In order to obtain the so-called cinch, Gordon, one has to do the following. Replace the real valued beta with an imaginary one. So I beta. Then the cos becomes a cosh, and remind, this is not a periodic function, so one expects a Taylor expansion. I mean, one expects that the Taylor expansion is a doable approximation for that model. Go ahead. Then what we have is a kind of easing type, phi to the 2n model. We know that the phi to the 2n model has two phases, even in d equal 2. Now the question, if you look up in a textbook, you will find that the cinch has a single phase. Why? Maybe the answer is clear for everyone, but I would like to tell you, if you don't know, uh, what would be the solution of this kind of ambiguity or puzzle. Okay? So we would like to attack the problem by FIG and see what is then the phase structure of the cinch. Again, an, a kind of uh, a generalization, which is the so-called shine. Uh, this is really the last one, I promise you. The shine contains, instead of an imaginary beta, a complex one. But please observe, in order to be physically reliable theory, one has to take the real value, which brings you a cost time a cosh. And if beta 1 is 0, then it is a cosh, so a cinch. And if beta 2 is 0, then you come back to the sine gordon. So the shine somehow interpolates between the sine gordon and the shine. We will also consider the phase structure, the C function of this model. So I talk about C function. Let's be precise what I mean C function. And then uh, let's jump to the word of uh, uh, conformal field theory, or more precisely, global and the local dilatation. These are somehow related to each other and play a special role in the equal two dimension. Let me let me go step by step. So global dilaton symmetry means that changing, let's say, the lattice space by a multiplicative factor lambda, which, do not, which does not depend on the x, I mean the space time. If you, go, if you consider local dilatation, then of course lambda is x dependent. Uh, staying in the level of global symmetry, one can immediately realize that this is nothing but scale invariance. This is the cornerstone of our FRG. We know that in second-order phase transition, if the model undergoes a second-order phase transition, it is self-similar, so it's scale invariant. So one expects that, that if we really take seriously the FRG and look for the fixed points of FRG, and that fixed points, the theory is scale invariant, so one finds that uh, this is a nice uh, uh, situation for global uh, dilatation symmetry. This is a phase diagram of the sine gordon showing you to the first time. You see two phases. The arrows indicate the direction of the flow. This is the separatrix somewhere here. So this is one phase. This is, the, by the way, the broken phase. 
and that's the other phase. And this is, please observe that this is the line of attractive fixed point here, the line of repulsive fixed point. And here you find this kind of IR convexity fixed point. Okay, these are the fixed points. So one expects global dilatation uh, symmetry at these fixed points. Now what happens if I switch to local one? Uh, I would like to really jump to D equal to. D equal special. In this case, the, uh, the, the, the theory is not just simply conformal invariant, but the conformal group is infinite dimensional, special situation, because the conformal and the scale invariants are hand in hand. So it means that what is trivially true that if the theory is conformal invariant, then it is scale invariant, but in D equal to the vice versa is okay. So once it is scale invariant, then it's conformal one. So what one expect that the fixed points of the FRG also represents a conformally invariant field theory, and one can identify the central charge of the corresponding conformal field theory. So one expect that these fixed points can be dressed up with central charges. And indeed, this is true. This is what we expect. So for example, here, a kind of Gaussian-like is associated with C equal 1. The attractive region, again, we put C equal 1. And here is this an infrared. We put C equal 0. I mean, we put. How? By hand. But that would be really nice to see that FRG work and tell us the, the favor that really computably see that these are the central charges. How can we do it? Uh, in order to do it, we should really add something else, and then comes Zamolodchikov C theorem, which tells us that if we are out of the fixed set points, we can still some, do something. We can define the so-called C function, which is a function of the couplings. For the sine Gordon, it is the U tilde and the beta square. Okay, so that's a function which is always a decreasing fun function from the U wave to the IR. And we always take the value of the central charge at the fixed set points. Can we construct such a kind of uh, function in the framework of FRG? Many papers one can iterate, but now I would like to use Alessandro, Giulio, and Carlos result. So taking the formula, adopting the formula what they derived in a paper, and try to really use this in order to address such a questions. Okay, so the goal is to see how it works for sine Gordon type models. Now, in order to do so, one has to make a little further step. More precisely, the original sine Gordon contains the beta, but in order to go beyond LPA, just for technical reasons, it's good to make a kind of rescaling of the field. So beta jumps here and becomes the wave function normalization. Still, the model has two parameters, z and u tilde. OK, that's just a technical trick. But I also would like to remind you that this technical trick requires the careful treatment of the regulator. So we are using a power law type regulator. Otherwise, we can easily run into a trouble losing the scale invariance. But this is a technical issue. So you see, I always indicate power law type regulators, B equal 1, so this is the mass cutoff. Here are the RG equations. But consider this is still an approximation because I use a single Fourier mode. I adopting a formula which is strictly speaking valid for LPA. We discussed this issue with Alessandro Carlos, so you know what I mean. So it's just a kind of approximation. What we expect that's still viable, still doable, and let's apply it. Okay. So three equations: one for the C function, and one for the Z, and one for the Fourier amplitude. We are in D equal two dimension, so the flow equation always looks like this. I switch to dimensionless quantities. And here are the results. What are the results? So what we wanted to do is the following. Let's consider region one, OK? Uh, what we want to do is to see that if we start from C equal one, and if we go through an RG trajectory, it really runs to C equal zero. This is the expected uh, wishful thinking, let me say. Uh, here, here you find some results. The colors correspond to various values of beta. And the green one, here is the green one, is the best one. Why? Because you see, this is start from C equal 1. And if we decrease k, it runs to C equal 0. So delta C is 1. This is what we expect. Because for sine Gordon, we know that the 
the corresponding associated central charge is one. And this trajectory is lying somewhere here. But if we move away from that line and we start from somewhere here, it is still produces us some reliable results. Of course, uh, under some numerical uh, uncertainties, these are the uncertainties. So at least 90% uh, or 80% accuracy we, can, we were able to reach. That's the region one. So up to now, this, is, this could be also considered as a kind of test of uh, Alessandro's, Giulia, and Carlo's result, and works fluently. Now what happens in region two, region three? I'm a bit confused, telling the truth that we don't know how to associate a C here. It's not a fixed point, first of all, and even if you extrapolate this, playing asymptotic safety or whatever, then please observe, this corresponds to large beta, large beta corresponds to small z, so the kinetic term frozen out. Now what is then the C uh, the central charge of this th uh, theory? I don't know. Nevertheless, if we really force by hand to put C equal 1, in region 3 we have reliable results, but as you see, numerically this is not so stable. So there is a question mark at this stage, and I cannot give you the correct answer. I'm open for discussion. If you can tell me what, I what do you think about what would be the theory in this case, I would be very grateful. So that's all what I wanted to say about the sango. Now let's switch to Cinch. Regarding Cinch, this is a very fast way to, to show you how effective the FRG for uh, Sangordon type models. Just take the linearized FRG, dropping all the nonlinear terms, substitute it, just this term, take the Fourier expansion of both sides, and one can easily reach to, to read of beta squared equal 8 pi. It's so easy. So for Sangordon, the linearized RG works very well. Let's try to adopt the same for the cinch. Please observe, we have this I beta, so this uh, plus becomes a minus, no beta square uh, critical value can be determined. This signals that no BKT transition appears in the cinch. Good. So what we have, no topological phase transition. This was a kind of trivial result. Okay, but then what? Let's go and do brute folly a kind of Fourier, a Taylor expansion of the model. Go ahead, it's a non-periodic non stuff. One, what one can see immediately that the coefficients are always positive. So if you consider this as a phi to the 2n model, we are always in the symmetric phase. That's why the model has a single phase. So we are somehow uh, confirmed that the textbooks are good. Even FRG tells us that the model has a single phase, but let's see how the RG flows works. This is what we did in a tricky way, and these are the RG trajectories or lines, which really implies that the model has a single phase. So that's about the cinch. And uh, if I wish to switch to the, sorry, if I wish, wish to switch to the summary of uh, the talk, uh, then I would like to go through this and mention just the very, the very last point which means that, what about the shine? What about other interpolating model? If you are interested in, there is a poster, more precisely poster number two, and where you can find this shine or whatever. But the reason I would like to conserve three minutes for myself to say something about this kind of Higgs idea. Now this is the very last thing that I would like to show, just three slides. But this is the most questionable part, okay? So I'm very grateful if you can tell me that Istvan, this is a crazy idea, forget it, or go ahead, I like this. So please uh, really do uh, uh, criticize what we, what we plan to do together with my Italian friends. So the idea is the following. Uh, took the usual standard uh, Beck mechanism. I, I go through this, but probably you all know how it looks like. Take the Higgs sector, take the usual typical Higgs Lagrange, uh, Higgs potential, which contains the parabola and the quadratic term, and perform the steps which requires uh, in order to dress mass for the uh, Z and, and the Ws. This is the straightforward thing what we do always. Uh, just few things. Uh, we use a certain parametrization. V is, of course, the vacuum expectation value known from low, low energy experiment. This is the Higgs mass measured by the LHC recently, so lambda can be calculated using the formula. That's a known thing, written in textbooks. Now what? Try to play with that 
and try to introduce other type of Higgs potential. Is it doable, first of all? Yes, it is not forbidden. It's not a priori given by the standard model. So one can play with this. Can one think about uh, higher order, higher uh, minima? Yes, it is true. It's a, it's a playground of today because we can play with stability. We can play with the ideas in, uh, inflaton dynamics, relate the Higgs and the inflaton at the same time. It's a nice thing. I, I uh, put two papers here, but of course, uh, it is not a, uh, not a total number of papers related to the issue, so I'm apologizing if I skip some important things, but I would like to show you that it is doable. But in every little paper, when I, when I go through the derivation, I always found a kind of polynomial extension of the Higgs. Why not try a periodic one? Seems to be a crazy idea, but trust me, this drastically changed the phase structure. Why? Because it has infinitely many minima. Infinitely many minima, so no Taylor expansion, or no truncation of the Taylor expansion. It is simply forbidden. Why we need this? First of all, let's go through the derivation, or what I would like to say, that the change compared to the previous one is just this blue one. A periodic stuff appears. Okay, this is one thing. One can fix beta in such a way that the vacuum expectation value of this periodic stuff to be equal to the normal standard model Higgs potential, then remains you. You can be changed to fine-tune to have the same Higgs mass. Crazy idea, am I right? And if it becomes more crazy, if you just consider a simple sine Gordon in D equal uh, 4. If you treat the model by FRG, purely the sine Gordon model, D larger than 2, so in D equal 2, one finds a single phase. Now it's wrong. So it's not even doable. It's a single phase we cannot do. It's, it's absolutely wrong. But now comes the idea. If we play with the uh, so-called massive sine Gordon model, which contains an explicit mass term, which known to have two phases, so it fulfills the requirement of having two phases, but it, according to our previous examinations and studies, the model safe in a sense that the parabola is always remains uh, positive, so we can have a chance to substitute it on the standard model Lagrangian, perform an RG, and see whether the stability of this, I don't know how to say, extended model uh, remains the same, or probably we can somehow escape the unstable uh, uh, region. So in other words, this is a kind of proposal, this is a work which is in progress, uh, but before we do any steps, I would be grateful for any comments. But that's really the last one what I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.